Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I am very excited because we are doing Thanksgiving recipes. So I'm gonna be showing you some of my favorite go-to Thanksgiving recipes for the holidays. And this video does have three recipes in it, but I will link a bunch of other recipes down below because I've recently just made some of the other stuff that I usually make for Thanksgiving. So I usually make lentil loaf, my hash brown hot dish, which is essentially like a healthy green bean casserole. And then I make mashed potatoes and gravy, which I have the best gravy recipe for you guys today. I make stuffing obviously, and then I also make a really good rosemary sea salt focaccia. So I will leave any extra recipes down below for you guys, but this is my favorite time of year because obviously Thanksgiving is the best. And when you eat a starch-based diet, like you can eat Thanksgiving dinner every single day. And I, every time this time of year comes around, I'm like, I don't know why I don't cook this food all the time. And I think once we have our bigger house, I definitely will. So just a little reminder for anybody who missed my last video, if you want to sign up for 50% off me and Kiki's brand new video course, Eat More Way Less, and our book, A Lean for Life. It will be coming out on January 1st, but if you sign up for our email list and opt-in sheet, you will get 50% off when it releases. So I will leave the link down below for you guys to do that. Also, if you aren't already, make sure you are following me on Instagram. I post tons of stuff in my stories every day about like what I'm eating, my exercise routine, um, recipes, stuff about our life and our house and our homestead and my garden and cats and all of those things. So make sure you go follow me on there. It's just at High Carb Hannah. And I think that's it. So without further ado, let's jump into the recipes. Okay, so I'm gonna get my potatoes going. The easiest way to make mashed potatoes is I just chop up I like to use yellow or red potatoes and I just wash them. I don't take the skin off or anything. You can if you want. And then I just put them in my Instant Pot and add a little bit of water, so like a quarter of a cup of water. And then I'm just gonna cook this on high pressure for 10 minutes and let it naturally release. And then I'll show you guys how I mash them and how to make this really simple, awesome gravy. Okay, you guys, are you ready for the best and easiest gravy recipe in the entire world. Okay, so as you can see here, I have four tablespoons of flour. Now, if you want this to be gluten-free, you can use arrowroot powder. Um, I've never tried like cornstarch or anything like that, but arrowroot powder does work. So to this, we are going to add one tablespoon of nutritional yeast. We are going to add one tablespoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of onion powder, and then this is my secret ingredient. So this is by Local Spicery. I will leave their website down below. It's just a mushroom blend. So this has porcini mushroom, rosemary pepper, marjoram, garlic, lemon peel. If you don't have this or you don't want to buy it, um, you could use just like poultry spice, and I think that that would be really good. Um, or else you could just kind of make your own blend of mushrooms. If you have like some type of mushroom and rosemary around, you could do that as well. But this is so good. So we're going to add a tablespoon of this into here. I like to add in a little bit of cracked black pepper. And then I also like to add in a little bit of cayenne because I like it spicy. You can probably tell that there is no salt in here because when we actually make this gravy in a minute, I will show you we make it with soy sauce. So there's different variations of this. You could add like smoked paprika to this to give it more of like a smoky flavor. You could also add a few squirts of liquid smoke when it is cooking. Um, but this is so good, you guys. Like mind-blowing gravy i'm not even kidding and the way that i store this is i just put it into a little jar like this and then whenever i want to eat mashed potatoes and gravy i just take out a little bit and mix it up and pour it over top and it's so easy it's not like i have to cook a bunch of mushrooms or blend anything it is so simple and so freaking delicious like i'm not even joking probably one of my favorite recipes i've ever come up with so just like that, I will store this just 
dry. And it's nice because you can take it places, you control the ingredients that obviously go inside of it, so you can play around with it and add like sage or thyme or Italian seasoning. And yeah, that's pretty much it. This will make four servings, so get creative, guys. And I definitely recommend that you try it. Okay, so to make this gravy, all we're going to do is add a tablespoon of soy sauce. All right, sorry, my dog started barking. So you wanna do this before you put it in the pan. You wanna add a tablespoon of soy sauce. You'll just wanna whisk it together. I like to add about half a cup of water total because this is gonna cook down a lot. Okay, so I have just actually sauteed these mushrooms in this pan and this pan has all the mushroom flavor still on it so I know the pan looks dirty but this is actually like a ton of flavor that you just do not want to throw away all right so to cook this we are just going to add this into our pan we're essentially just going to bring this up to a boil and let it cook down until it thickens so if you have any chunks, you just want to kind of smooth them out before it starts to get too hot. But see how it's thickening so much already? So we're going to add some more water into here. And this is like something that you kind of just really have to intuitively do. Until you get it the thickness that you want. And you can taste it. Add more salt if you want and just kind of play around with the seasonings as it goes. And it's just really gonna depend on what consistency you want, but I would think overall, so I would say that I add, you know, a half a cup of water when I mix it dry, and then I add probably another half a cup of water while it's in the pan. And I think I added about another tablespoon of soy sauce. So this actually looks really good. This is the consistency that I want, so I'm just gonna take this off of here. All right, so our potatoes are done. And this is just the simplest thing ever. So I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of garlic powder into here. I also love to add the juice of half a lemon. It just kind of gives it this nice tanginess. And then I'm just going to add in a little bit of soy milk and I'll just add this as I mash. And I don't add any salt into here just because the gravy is very salty, so I just like to keep it kind of simple. And then we can just pour a little bit of this gravy over top. And then I always just like to add a little bit of black pepper on top. And that is it, you guys. Like a super simple gravy mashed potato recipe. I mean, ever since I have developed this gravy recipe, it's just made it so simple and we basically eat mashed potatoes three to four times a week now because it's so easy. So I hope you guys try it. I will leave the recipe link down below for you and let's move on. Okay guys, so we are gonna start this off by making the focaccia. And this is something that I actually weigh out on a scale because it just makes it so much easier because bread needs to be very specific. So this is just my bread maker. I make everything in here. I'm just going to be using the dough setting and I'll show you what I'm putting in here but I'll also leave the exact like grams and measurements down below because it is pretty important that you get everything right here. So the first thing that we're gonna add into here is eight ounces of water. And then I'm gonna be adding in two teaspoons of sugar. And you wanna add this everything in in the same order if you're using a bread machine. I also have two teaspoons of yeast. This is just dry active yeast that I get in bulk from nuts.com. And then here I have 320 grams of whole wheat white flour. This is just the Bob's Red Mill organic. It's whole wheat flour, but it's white, so it's unbleached. I'm not really sure how they make it, <laughs> honestly. And then what I do to make a really good bread is I actually add in 40 grams of vital wheat gluten. And I feel like this just gives it such a better like bounciness 
and this is actually the recipe that I use for everything so like if I make pizza dough I use this recipe it never changes and then lastly we're going to add in a teaspoon of salt so you just don't want the salt and the yeast to be together because they can deactivate each other all right so we're just gonna put this on the dough setting I actually never really even let it go all the way I just let it mix and get everything nice and like perfect into a dough and then I take it out I don't let it ferment so we'll let this do its thing and we will be back okay so now that our dough is all mixed I will show you guys how we make this focaccia so I just like to take a little bit of the flour that I used and put it down on a clean surface and then I'm just gonna roll this in the flour so that when it poofs in the pan before we bake it it won't stick to the pan and then you don't have to use oil all right so I'm just gonna use a little baking pan like this I'm going to add a little bit of extra flour into the bottom Again, you could use a little bit of spray oil if you want, um, but I'm just going to kind of push this out and then I'm just going to cover this with a piece of cling wrap and let this rise for about an hour. So it should, by the end of this, I'll show you, it will like cover this entire pan and then all we need to do is just bake it. Okay, so to start this stuffing, we're first just going to make a flax egg. So I have three tablespoons of flax that I just ground in my Vitamix. And I'm just gonna add some of my vegetable broth to this. I never really measure this, but you wanna add about six tablespoons of water per three tablespoons of flax. So we're just gonna let this sit and become very gelatinous. So to start this saute, I'm just going to add a little bit of soy sauce. I like to cook stuff in soy sauce because it just gives it more flavor than water. So I have a small yellow onion that I diced here and then four cloves of garlic. We're just going to add this in here and let it saute for about five minutes until it becomes nice and fragrant. Okay, so now that this has been sauteing for a bit, I'm gonna add in my celery. So I just have three chopped celery stalks. All right, so this is smelling really good. I'm just gonna add a spritz of water to this pan to get all the stuff stuck on the bottom off. And then I'm just going to mix all the rest of the ingredients in this pan before I transfer it to the baking dish. So the recipe actually does call for mushrooms. My husband hates mushrooms, so I'm actually just going to cook them separately and then just eat them with my stuffing. But here I have, this is just a can of lentils that I rinsed and drained. It's about three cups of lentils. And then here I have a cup of wild rice blend that I cooked. So this is half a cup dry and I just cooked it by putting half a cup of the wild rice in my Instant Pot and one cup of water and I cooked it for 20 minutes. So then we have one medium chopped sweet potato and you just wanna cube it really small because this is gonna cook when it's in the oven. Like, look how colorful and beautiful this looks. It's just like hashtag health, man. All right, and then we're gonna add in our spices. So I have some garlic powder, fennel, dried rubbed sage, and then dried thyme. And then I always like to add in a little bit of cracked black pepper. And then lastly, into this pot, we are going to add our flax eggs. So see how thick this thing has gotten? This is what's going to just help bind all of our ingredients together as it cooks in the oven. It smells so much like Thanksgiving in here with the thyme and the rub sage. Oh my gosh. So you just wanna mix this up on the stove top as good as you can. All right, so I have a nine by nine baking dish here and I'm gonna put everything that we just cooked into the very bottom of this.
And you will just want to spread this out as evenly as you can. I like to actually push it down into the pan. And then here I have six slices of Ezekiel bread. So I'm just gonna use this to top. And I just chopped these up. I didn't like let them sit out overnight or anything. I feel like this natural type of bread gets stale pretty fast. So if you don't prepare in advance, it's totally fine. So you just want to spread this out evenly and kind of push it down as well. And then here I have my vegetable broth. This is actually just better than bouillon and water that I mixed together. We're just going to pour this over top. And then we're going to bake this covered in the oven for about 30 minutes. And then we're going to take the foil off and cook it uncovered to get the top nice and crispy at the very end. Okay, so this has been rising for about an hour. Now, if you're doing this on Thanksgiving Day, I would recommend just letting it sit like that until about 30 minutes before you're ready to eat because this focaccia is so good when it's fresh, but I need to edit this video at some point today, so I am just going to bake it now. So what we're gonna do is just push this out to the sides, and if you let this kind of rise all day, it might be huge and you might not even need to do this. So you just want it to cover the bottom of the pan and then you'll just want to stick your fingers in here to kind of give it some little ridges like this. Now you could put olive oil on here. Um, I've done that before. I actually like it a lot better without oil, but some people are kind of picky. So do what you like. Um, but if you want this oil free, it is delicious oil free. So I have some rosemary here and I'm just going to take a couple pinches of this and just break it up over top like that. And you can kind of just push it back in if you want. I really love rosemary, so I'm gonna add a lot. Another thing that you could do is you could chop up fresh garlic and also put that on here or even olives would be really good. And then I just like to take a salt grinder like this and really lightly grind some big chunks of salt on here. So it's kind of like a sea salt rosemary focaccia. And then you just get this like salty flavor on the very top and it's so good. So all we're gonna do is bake this in the oven on 450 uncovered for about 20 minutes and that's it. All right guys, here is our beautiful stuffing. I think it looks so gorgeous and we also have the focaccia. So when you put the flour around the outside of this, you can just easily lift it out. Like, look how easy that is. You don't even need to use oil or anything like that. And you have a beautiful, oil-free, healthy focaccia. So I'm just gonna cut this and then I'll put it back on here. All right, so I just like to cut this into eight pieces like this. And as you can see, the inside is perfect and this is just so good to like dip in your gravy or have you know um, with your Thanksgiving dinner I'm gonna leave some other recipes down below for you guys because I do have a green bean casserole variation that's actually called ha hash brown hot dish but it's delicious it tastes like green bean casserole I'll just take a little bit out of here so you guys can see what it looks like but it is Perfect, and it smells so good. So you got the sweet potato, the wild rice, the lentils, and the Ezekiel, and this is like one of my favorite meals to make. I don't know why I don't make Thanksgiving dinner every week, you guys, like I could eat this all the time. And the best thing about a starch-based diet is that you can eat these foods all the time and be healthy and lose weight. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this little Thanksgiving dinner thing. And like I said, I will leave more recipes down below for you guys. I do have um, some pumpkin pie things that I made one year and we usually make lentil loaf with all of this. So yeah, I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving. I hope you try these recipes and that you enjoy them. If you do, tag me on Instagram. I would love to see them, but I'm gonna go enjoy this delicious food and I will see you guys on the next video.